Alright then, everybody. Do you remember this circuit? Yes, it's finally done. It took about, I don't know, five years or so. So, this is the schematic of the circuit. This is one of Steve Wall's designs, so I cannot take credit for this. Unfortunately, it doesn't say how many turns the secondary should be, or what kind of, like, dimensions of what the primary and the secondary should be, and how many turns, and how many... Yeah, it doesn't specify any of that. The only thing that it does specify, well, apart from component values, is this thing right here, where it says the L1, which is our primary, and that capacitor there, form a tuned circuit. I have no idea what that capacitor must be, so I'm going to experiment and find out what works best. So I'm just performing some last minute checks before I connect this up to a tester coil, and there is one slight thing, well, slightly perplexing thing about this. Now you might notice this blinking LED, it looks like it's blinking for a few seconds then going off, then blinking for a few seconds then going off. It's not actually doing that, it's just because of the difference in the camera's frame rate and the rate that that's blinking. To me that looks like that's steadily blinking on and off, but to the camera it doesn't. So, I have a light bulb connected up basically as a test load. And as I turn this up, see the bulb come on. So I turn this up more, the bulb will flash brighter. So we know the interrupter is working. That's what this LED is doing, it's telling me what the interrupter is doing. The strange thing is, this gate driver chip, which is a UCC37322, even though there's nothing going into the antenna, we are getting output. Right, so I'm doing a little experiment here. So I've removed the gate driver chip from the socket there. And I have another one in this breadboard here. Now pay no attention to this chip. That's not doing anything at the moment. Well, it is powered, but it's not connected to anything at the moment. So we have the other gate driver chip here. And I'm jumping the interrupter's output to pin 3 on this chip. And pin 2 is tied to ground through a resistor like it is on that. And I'm probing the output of the chip and yeah, it's doing the same thing so I know it's not some... So I know I haven't miswired something there because it's doing it here too and I can get a more clear idea of where each wire is going. So I think this is just something that the chip does if you pulse pin 3. And it does kind of make sense that it would do that, or otherwise, how would you start the tester coil part of the circuit oscillating? So anyway, I've now connected the output of this chip, which is outputting a very high frequency square wave, at about, I don't know, 150 kilohertz or so. And that's going into pin 2 of the UCC37322. And if we look on the scope, you can see we're getting some nice little bursts of high frequency. At least you would be able to see it if I move the camera up far enough. I'll zoom up on that. Let's see what we actually have. So I'm just going to assume here that pulsing pin 3 on this chip with nothing going into pin 2 is going to make it reflect that on the output. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going with. So, I'm about to test this thing now. We've got it all set up and ready. This is a bit on the side, but uh, yeah. get that nice and level. So I've put a heatsink on the MOSFET. As I don't know what capacitor I'm going to need across the MOSFET, I'm just using this variable capacitor. Got this all wired in parallel, so it's about 1.3 nanofarads when it's like all the way and uh, Like that's about 30 picofarads or something, maybe 40. So we're doing a low power test with a couple of resistors connected in line with the output of the circuit. So if anything goes wrong, because lots of things could go wrong, I could have this primary the wrong way round. Or this thing might refuse to oscillate. 
And before anybody says yes, I know with these resistors in, this is going to kind of be redundant, but that's the least of my worries right now. I don't know if the antenna's long enough to pick up their feedback. In fact, I might actually just add a little bit to that. Anything can happen. I don't know what's going to happen, so uh, let's switch it on and see if it works. <laughs> okay, we're all ready to go. I put a screwdriver on the top of this because I do intend to achieve breakout by the end of the video. I'm not expecting it right now, but... So I'm just going to do a short test run, see what we get. So I'm plugging it in, sorry if my huge head is in the way right now. I've lost the other wire. Because it's all the way over there for some reason. Right, just plug this in. And... Uh, Let's see if it does anything. Okay, well, I'm getting something on the scope there. So, that's a good sign. Then I'm going to take this compact fluorescent. I'm not seeing any signs of any... That should flash when I'm putting that near the coil, but it's not, so... Uh, might need more power, or I might have the primary the wrong way around. So... I'm going to try that. So I'm going to swap the primary round and let's see if that does anything. These resistors aren't even warm. Neither is the MOSFET. Don't really care how hot the resistors get, just so long as my MOSFET doesn't get that hot as well. Right, so... Is around there. Trying to make sure that nothing shorts out on anything, because I do have a few wires crissing and crossing about the place. Alright then, let's try again. With the primary flipped around. Oh, that looks a bit more promising. Getting much more on the scope. Let's see if our CFL will flash. Oh yeah. It's not very much, but it is there. So that was with 100 ohms in series with the primary. Now we have 50 ohms. Let's see what we get. Should be much stronger. Oh yeah, I know it's doing something because I can hear my speakers going. Da -da 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 Obviously outputting something, but I'm not getting much on the CFL, which is kind of strange. Although that definitely does seem to be tuning it. Alright, so this is with 22 ohms between the primary and circuits. And I've put the fluor compact fluorescent on top of the coil. Alright, that's flashing quite brightly. Let's just see if we can tune this. I don't seem to be getting any change on the scope. But at least I've got two indications of if this has given output. Because I've got the scope, what the scope's reading, and what this is doing. So, we know that works. I wonder if I can get a plasma globe effect in this little incandescent light bulb. Oh yeah. That works. Exciting all the little molecules of gas in there. Releasing their light as they jump back to their lower state. Alright, so now it's time for the semi-full power test. Now in the previous tests, I was running this off the full voltage of this transformer, but I have resistors in series with the primary. Well, now those resistors are gone. Now previously, I was running this off the full voltage from this transformer, which is about 20 volts. I'm now going to be run I'm now going to be running this on about 9 volts, which should still be enough to work all the logic in there. And 9 volts is like 18 volts. It's going to be like 20 something volts going into the primary coil. Whereas before it was 60. Let's see what we get. Now, 
I want to see sparks flying. And I want to smell ozone. Will it do it? Well, this photonic induction will say. I'm disappointed. I ain't having it. Well, I've tried various different top loads and various different things as breakout points, and, uh, well, this is about as good as it gets. Right, so we're gonna run this on the full 60 volts. Well, 20 volts from the transformer, but 60 volts that the circuit runs on. No idea if this will work. Oh, that's more like it. My variable capacitor is arcing, which is not a very good thing. That's not what I was expecting. Just check nothing's getting knocked. Nope. Good. Well, we have output. I told you we'd get breakout, and we do. So I'm just going to take the camera off. We'll have a little look at that. So yeah, I can say this works. Unfortunately, my variable capacitor keeps arcing, but uh... Ooh, scary electricity! But like I was saying... Like I was saying that. Yeah. So this is about 630 picofarads, according to my meter. So, yeah, I definitely think we've got this on a harmonic. So it's not giving out the full potential of what it could actually produce. But I'm going to call this for now. I'll revisit this sometime in the future. Not too distant future, of course. Find out what the ideal capacitor for this would be and what the... Um, Whatever frequency this puts out. And yeah, I think that's it for now. So that just about brings us to the end of this video. But not to the end of the Tesla coils. Because I've still got more that I want to try. So this is the one that I just did. And we saw how well that worked. So there's other Tesla coil circuits I want to try. Here's one of them. And here's another one. Could try that one. Or this one. That looks very simple. This one here, which uses valves. Or this one, which looks rather complicated, but actually is not. So, I'm going to put this up to you guys. Which do you want me to try next? So I've got these five. Well, obviously not that one, because that's the one I just did. But how about I design and make a tester coil from scratch? I'm going to put this up to you guys, because I I want to know what you want to see next. So, anyway, that's it for now, so until next time, goodbye.